Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Shankara Buildings Products Q4 and FI24 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Arihant Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Miraj Shah from Arihant Capital. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Shah. Please go ahead. Thank you, Renju. Uh, good afternoon and a very warm welcome to everyone to the Q4 and FY24 earnings call of Shankara Building Products. Today on the management, we have Mr. Alex Vurghese, the CFO, uh, and Mr. Dhananjay Mirle Srinivas, Vice President. Uh, thank you for allowing us to host you all once again, sir. And uh, without further ado, I'll uh, hand over the floor to Mr. Uh, Mr. Dhananjay. Uh, over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to Shankara Building Products Limited earnings conference call for the year ended 31st March 2024. Joining me today is Mr. Alex Vergis, our CFO. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this call may contain forward-looking statements, which are predictions, projections, or other estimates about future events. These statements are based on management's current expectations and involve risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially. Our presentation for this call has been uploaded to the exchange. I hope you have all had the opportunity to review it. The fiscal year 2024 has presented several challenges for the entire building materials and construction industry. Along with high interest rates and persistent inflation, the year further unfolded with adverse climate conditions with flooding in few pockets and subsequently softened construction activity and discretionary spending amid ongoing elections. Despite this, FY 2024 was indeed a successful year for Shankara. We achieved our highest ever annual revenue and profit during this year. Our FY 2024 revenue grew by 20% to rupees 4,828 crores during the year. Our steadfast commitment to profitable growth has yielded in profits outpacing revenue growth due to an enhanced contribution from value-added steel and on-steel offerings. Our EBITDA increased by 25% to rupees, 100, rupees 156 crores, while our net profit increased by 29% to rupees 81 crores. Our EBITDA margin was 3.2%, marking a 12 basis point increase from last year. In addition to our strong brand value in the South and our robust operating model, this growth has been possible primarily with strategic initiatives implemented over the past few years. This has made our business model more resilient, enabling us to navigate industry headwinds successfully. I would like to take this opportunity to talk upon a few of these steps and how it helped us. First, we had the expansion of our steel offerings to include a diverse range of value-added products. Traditionally, our revenue stream has been heavily reliant on steel tubes and pipes, where we already command a sizable market share in the South. We have taken a conscious effort to adding more products in our steel portfolio, which includes TMT, roofing sheets, flats, and logs. We have also forged good partnerships over the last few years. Our steel volumes during the year were at 6.5 lakh tons, an increase of 25, 27% year on year. A substantial portion of this volume growth is attributable to our value added steel products, which witnessed a 43% growth compared to our pipe and tube volume growth of 20%. An aggressive push of value added steel products to our existing customers and through our omni channel presence has increased our market share in this business. This has improved our EBITDA in the non-retail segment from 1.1% in FY 2023 to 1.5% in FY 2024. 
Secondly, a continued focus on expanding our non-steel shares has seen the business grow at a CAGR of 50% in the past three years and 30% in FY 2024. We have seen a healthy growth across all our product verticals of plumbing, fittings, sanitary wear, tiles, electricals, and paints. In addition to strong brands that we house, we have also been expanding our partnerships with marquee domestic and international brands in the segment. We have added two exclusive non-steel stores in Chennai and Morbi during the year and converted three of our existing stores in Karnataka to hybrid stores comprising of both steel and non-steel products in April 2024. Currently, our non-steel offerings are present in 35 out of our 91 stores. Hence, we believe we have a significant runway without a need to aggressively open new stores. Our gross margins in non-steel have been in the range of 10 to 12 percent, and I'm glad to share that as we expand our scale in this segment, our EBITDA margin has also shown improvement, reaching 6 percent during FY 2024 for non-steel. Point number three, our private label Focha Ceramica in the ceramic business has demonstrated a stellar growth of 50 percent in its second year, achieving rupees 100 and 16 crore top line. We have achieved sizable growth in Kerala and Tamil Nadu markets and now are focusing on Karnataka, Telangana and Maharashtra in the coming year. We will also be inaugurating our display center in Morbi by June 2024, which will further strengthen our presence in this segment and support our plan to go pan-India in the coming years. Point number four. Along with our growing value-added products, another key enabler for our growth has been our efforts to enhance our presence outside of South India. Over the past year, we have achieved strong growth from Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Madhya Pradesh. Our Western and Central India operations have grown by 46% and 39% year-on-year, -year respectively. Our share from West and Central has reached 14% of our total top line in FY24, and we expect continued growth momentum from these regions. While we are focused towards a sustained and profitable growth, we continue to be mindful of keeping our balance sheet efficient with an asset light model for store expansion and better working capital management. Our ongoing efforts include fostering and fortifying relationships with key suppliers to ensure adequate credit availability. We pride ourselves in building a robust supply chain to facilitate and expedite delivery while optimizing our inventory levels. This contributes to keeping our working capital at around 30 days. Our net debt levels stood at rupees 49 crore by March end, compared to 71 crore in the previous year. Our cash and bank balances for the year stood at rupees 34 crores compared to 12 crores in the last year. The return on capital employed improved to 18% as compared to 15% in the previous year. As you would all be aware, in order to simplify our business structure, we have taken a step towards demerging our building materials marketplace business, which has consistently delivered significant value. We have provided an indicator split of revenues for our marketplace and manufacturing business standing at Rs. 3,836 crores for our marketplace and Rs. 993 crores for our manufacturing for the fiscal year of 2024. The marketplace business is poised for higher margin accretion and enhanced return indicators with focus on value-added avenues. The manufacturing business will benefit from a focused management team working to optimize operational efficiency and competitiveness. Our aim is to unlock substantial value for our shareholders in the years ahead. Our demerger scheme is currently waiting for approval from SEBI. We believe the entire demerger process should be implemented by Q4 S525. For the coming year, we believe the construction industry will continue to be a focus point post elections. We are well positioned to capitalize on the opportunities in the construction and real estate sector. We continue to work towards strategic opportunities in the e-commerce space to bolster our omni-channel approach. 
and we believe with a strong foundation and ongoing strategic initiatives, our aim to continue our growth momentum will continue with a focus on improving our margins. With this, I would now like to hand over the call to the moderator for the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you. We will now be beginning the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question comes from the line of Guneet Singh with Counter Cyclic. Please go ahead. Hi, sir, I'm audible. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, Q1 is for 24, we had guided that we are looking at 20 to 30 percent CAGR and uh, an outlook of uh, 10,000 CR revenues uh, for the coming five, say by FY, FY28, FY29. So, sir, uh, look, considering the performance uh, in uh, uh, FY24, where we uh, saw uh, a top line growth of about uh, less than 20 percent, basically. So, I mean, uh, I just want to understand uh, what what uh, led to slower growth than what we had projected in the beginning of the year, and uh, looking at the current scenario, what kind of growth and numbers are we looking at? Are we still on track for the 10,000 year revenues in the coming five years? Sure. So um, I'll just address this in two points. First point, uh, we did grow at 20% for the last year when you look at year on year. And uh, to say why maybe that CAGR, what we expected, did not come in is, as you have probably seen from the other companies and from other results this last few months, there has been more single digit growth across the industry. We are still been successful in a trying market condition and have grown at 20%. So I believe that with improvements coming in the market in the following year and uh, things I think streamlining after elections, uh, we should be on track and we should look at continuing at that category of 20 to 30% for the coming years. All right, sir. Sam, what kind of uh, margins are we looking at for FY25 uh, going forward, looking at the current market conditions? So, uh, what could also happen, I think, with this year, with the demerger coming in, there will be a bit of a separation in our EBITDA. But as you look at the marketplace model, we are looking at a 3.5 to 3.75 uh, percent EBITDA. All right. And so, uh, like on a consolidated basis currently, or for what the division? I think consolidated would come to around uh, three and a half. All right. That's all from the side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes on the line of Rahul Dhruv with Pegasus Group. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon. Um, I was just uh, wanting to uh, get a little bit of an update on uh, the hybrid stores that you mentioned, which are 35 right now. Um, so what's the kind of capex that goes into uh, into making it a hybrid or making it into something where you can sell, sell steel and non-steel products? A. And B, what, uh, out of the 91, how many do you think can really get, uh, uh, you know, get to that level? Okay. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, not all products are hybrid. Around uh, six stores are exclusive non-steel stores whereas the remaining 20 and 29 would be hybrid. Uh, the capex for a hybrid store, depending on the size, we look at an average of around uh, two crores, two to three crores, but looking at two crores for a hybrid model. And uh, that usually has to do with interiors and finding a better entry and type of interior feel for the non-steel product as they differ from the steel experience. Out of our 91 stores, I think we could see maybe another 30 odd stores being in good locations and good, uh, good let's say, spaces and markets for a hybrid model. 
but uh, we are taking it as we advise around two to three stores per year because we do feel that we can still get a lot out of the existing stores and we are looking at new territories and strategically growing these hybrid stores. Okay. And secondly, sir, uh, in your fourth quarter margin uh, for retail was around 6.4%, which I think is the highest that we've seen in the last uh, almost 12 quarters. So um, I was just wondering if uh, this is a, as a number, because we've always been between 5.1 and 5.8. Uh, is, is there a one-off here, or is it something just sustainable? Uh, so we had seen a better response in the market for Q4. And also the share of non-steel and various steel were higher in our retail segment. Obviously, that has definitely accredited to the increase in the retail uh, margin percentage. Uh, we do feel it's uh, sustainable. I think going forward, we should definitely aim for between 6 to 6.5 percent for the margin program. Great. I just have one more question, and this is regarding the 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 SKUs, uh, which you have been uh, you know, mentioning at around the lakh SKUs. Uh, can you explain, uh, give, give me some idea in terms of how much, how many of them are there in a hybrid store? Uh, so a hybrid store will probably cater to 80,000, around uh, 70 to 80,000 in terms of uh, SKUs, but a lot of it would be display SKUs. Not everything is in stock in a hybrid store. As you know, steel is more of displayed in every store, while as the non-steel works at a hub and spoke model. So if you look at display SKUs, you would definitely have 80 to 90, 70 to 80,000 SKUs in a hybrid store. But if it comes to stocking, it would be probably down to 20, 15 to 20,000 SKUs. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Rishikesh Oza from Global Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is with respect to the steel and non-steel business. So can you please guide on the growth rate going ahead or revenue growth rate for steel business as well as non-steel business going as an FI25 and FI26 and also also, if you could guide for the EBITDA margin for both the divisions. Okay. Uh, so, for steel, we are looking at the 20 to 25% CAGR, whereas for non steel, we are definitely looking at a 30 to 35% CAGR uh, for the coming years. Uh, when it comes to the EBITDA margins, uh, steel is currently around, at a, steel EBITDA is currently around. 2 to 2.5, and whereas non steel is uh, 6, we are hoping that as uh, non steel scales up and we get more economy of scale, that could push up to 6.5 to 7 in the coming years. And steel would be in the same way? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, the steel EBITDA margins would be in the same range, 2 to 2.5%? Uh, steel EBITDA margins would be. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the management line has been disconnected. Please be on hold while we quickly get them reconnected.
Ladies and gentlemen, the management line has been reconnected. Please go ahead. Hello, I think uh, are we still on uh, the call with the gentleman who was asking about the EBITAS? Yes, yes. So we want the steel EBITDA guiding card also. Yeah, sorry. So uh, we're talking about a steel growth of 20 to 25 percent CAGR with an EBITDA margin of 3 percent. And we're looking at non-steel at a growth of 30 to 35 percent CAGR with an EBITDA margin of 6 to 6.5 percent. Okay. Okay, and one more question. What uh, do you have any ROC target for FI25 as well as FI26? ROC is around 18%. So post demerger, then there should have been change. So we uh, post demerger, we are expecting that business, uh, uh, this one will be around 28%. Uh, where the existing SBPL will be around uh, 4 to 4.5%. Four On an average, it will be around. Uh, uh, it will improve from 18% on a console level. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question comes from the line of Deepak Poddar with Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm audible, sir. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, thank you very much uh, uh, for this opportunity. So just a clarification, I mean, uh, yeah, you mentioned about 3.5 to 3.75% uh, some kind of EBITDA margin outlook. So uh, did you mention it on a consolidated basis or, or on the marketplace, uh, the demerge entity, uh, that outlook? Uh, so the marketplace, we're talking about 3.5 to 3.75. And on a consolidated, we're looking at 3.3 to 3.5. 3.3 to 3.5% on a, on, on a consolidated basis. Yes, on a consolidated Okay, okay. And uh, so can you throw some more light? We are, uh, we are talking about only two to three stores opening, right? But, uh, but, uh, but in, in spite of that, our growth, uh, we are talking about much higher growth in terms of 20 to 30% CAGR. Uh, so, so what will drive that growth? I mean, uh, if I have to uh, pinpoint top two, three reasons that will drive this growth in spite of lower store count. I think one of the reasons you did mention was about going deep or making existing store larger. So more elaboration on that would help, sir. Yeah. Uh, so two, three things. I think uh, one would definitely be adding a few more hybrid stores of two or three like we are guiding. Second would be our average uh, ticket size has also increased. So definitely getting a bigger share of wallet from customers. We also do have a larger mix of products coming in. So now we do have a lot of uh, runway and growth for electrical, paint, sanitary tiles, all those verticals, which will again see more business from those stores. And uh, as we've also seen, we've had a very big growth from the Western and Central region, which will continue to grow rapidly and aggressively. So that would also consolidate and help us in our overall growth turnover. Okay, and, and, and all this three, four combination of factor will, will kind of help us uh, reach the target that we are kind of... Um, yeah, target. definitely. I think all of it at different uh, percentages will help us. And we are also looking at opening stores. It's not that we're not looking at opening any stores. We are looking at opening stores in strategic locations where we feel that we can get a quicker uh, return and quicker growth in those stores. So that's why we are saying the three to four stores or two to three stores. Okay, okay. And, and just uh, one last thing on the merger. So post this demerger, the management would be entirely different handling, uh, I mean, different management would be handl handling this individual company that will be created? Uh, yeah, the structure will be shared. It would be, uh, I think, uh, obviously the managing director would remain the same for both entities. But we are looking at uh, bringing in a few more directors and also um, separating the manufacturing and having a separate focus team for that business. So this will be shared within a quarter or two as we are getting more into the process and separating the structure. Okay, okay. But have we did the, any kind of analysis? What would be the extra overheads that we can envisage uh, once uh, uh, because of these changes? Uh, we're not really looking at any extra overheads. I think it's just reshuffling of the existing teams that we do have with more focus on certain lines for the existing team. So there may be a few additions, but not uh, really too much of a... Uh, increase in overhead. As we come out in quarter one or in the next two quarters, I think that will already be more clear. Okay, okay, okay. That, that would be helpful, helpful sir. Uh, I think that's it from my side. All the very best to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
A reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question comes on the line of Siddharth Agarwal with Prudent Value Partners. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, sir. So my first question is I wanted to know a little bit more about the manufacturing division, so the, which is the Shankara Building Products Limited. So post emerger, this uh, segment will still have more than you know 400 crore worth of assets, equity capital, and with a much lower return here. So what is the if there is any plan within the management, you know, to revive this, and if there is any work which is going on, how do you see this division panning out over the next few years? Good afternoon. So um, as you know, we have the three manufacturing units. So we have three subsidiaries. So how we see it, we are looking at more value-added products in those lines. We're looking at uh, increasing our uh, utilization of our capacity, which is currently around 50%. And uh, we are looking at a more focused management for this. So I think all these factors put together would see better growth and aspects in this. For exact numbers, I think it would take us this year to get back to you with exact number growth in terms of what we could expect as a ROC and as a uh, revenue. But we do look at the more direct to sales, direct sales to market, which currently may be coming through the existing marketplace. And uh, I think a mix of all of these factors would be how we would look at creating better value in the manufacturing business. Okay. And for this value added products, uh, which we want to add to this, into the existing products, are there any further capex that we expect to do in this division? Uh, no, all of our units are uh, well maintained. I think all of our machines are also up to date. So I think uh, with more focus, we could definitely add more of these products. For example, our subsidiary Century Wells is already in the roofing line. So I think definitely pushing out more capacity and tonnage from those units is possible. So I think, uh, like I said, a more focused approach and more direct sales to market will be, we do not need more capex for this growth. Are there any personnel changes that are being done for this division to help revive it? So to get, you know, is, is there a need to get a uh, higher or, you know, a different kind of talent who has more expertise in, you know, running the manufacturing units versus the retail units? Uh, so since we're already running the manufacturing units, we do have a few gentlemen who are already capable of doing that. Yes, obviously we are never opposed to adding some talent or looking out for somebody who can definitely help in this. But as of now, we have not really thought of adding anyone, maybe more at mid-management segment or uh, low management, but we would have dedicated management from our existing team to focus on this. Okay. And so besides these manufacturing units, we overall have 5 lakh square feet of warehouses across the country. Is there uh, any you know, amount of warehouses that we actually own? On our so most of the warehouses we are owning, uh, we own the warehouses. And this will go to the, this will remain in the retail portion or building products division or will it go to the manufacturing division, the warehouses? In the manufacturing division. It will remain with the manufacturing division. Okay. And we have 5 lakh square feet of warehouses across the country. Correct. Yes. And for this, uh, uh, so it, it is at the cost plus basis that we'll charge the uh, building materials division. So uh, I'm the question that I'm asking is, say, this, these warehouses as of now, do they store products other than being manufactured by our manufacturing divisions also? Uh, so it's a mix. Some warehouses obviously do have a mix of products, whereas some are only for the manufacturing. And uh, whatever would the, 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 the marketplace would require would be at an arm's length uh, agreement, and there would be obviously a rent to that. Okay, great. Well, uh, that answers some of my questions. Thank you very much. I'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question comes from the line of Pinkash Takarani with ProfitGate Capital Services. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you can hear. Yes, so we uh, basically have to have a clarification regarding the EBITDA margins of like. Uh, uh, when you talk about, talking about uh, deal merger, post deal merger, you'd have uh, an in market rate uh, uh, segment around 3.3% to 3.5%. Uh, 
while in manufacturing around 2 to 2.5 percent and on the total education you are in that is around 3.5 percent so uh, how that management is like um, are they like uh, looking to uh, have more growth in uh, marketplace business uh, than the manufacturing one uh, so definitely we are looking at more growth in the marketplace business we do feel there's a lot of value to be unlocked there and that is where most of our uh, growth engines are for example non steel and value added steel but we will also look to grow the manufacturing with better capacity utilization so definitely i think you could see there will be growth in both probably a little more aggressive for the marketplace model uh, we are looking like you said an ebitda margin at the marketplace of 3.3 to 3.5 and at the manufacturing of 2 to 2.2 so that could be how the ebitda would be i think uh, consolidated uh, we're looking at maybe around 3 yeah we're looking at around 3 so i think uh, that would improve i think as the marketplace improves this last question uh, uh, what's the present capacity utilization uh, of the manufacturing is approximately around 50 percent okay thank you so much thank you a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and 1 to ask a question next question comes on the line of mandit with alpha invest please go ahead thank you for the opportunity sir uh, for the private label that we have on the tank segment uh, yeah. do you think uh, is there any uh, conflict that we see when we try and sell our own private label compared to some other brand i mean will this be and and do you plan to also move to uh, private labeling and say other products so sanitary or something like that uh, so to answer the first part of the question so we do not feel there is too much of a conflict i think our private label is more direct to market and also in projects whereas our retail does have a mix of all the products when brand we do hold so currently we have grown very well in our private label but we also have a healthy growth of all the brands we are with so we don't really do not face any conflict yet and i don't see there to be a conflict in the future i think the market is big enough for both brands and other brands as well uh for the second part of the question currently we are not uh exploring any interest or we currently have no interest to bring private label into any of the sanitary or other business because we are very happy with the principal suppliers we are dealing with and they have built big brands which we are very happy to sell from our stores okay okay sir and i think question sir i think you spoke about uh, we owning uh, most of our warehouses so uh, will it be possible for you to give say maybe in Karnataka, what kind of warehouses we are owning? Say Maharashtra, maybe just in terms of square feet or uh, the area that we own. Uh, we'll get back to you the exact calculation, but uh, we do, as I said, we do own many of them uh, warehousing as that is how it's been through the legacy of the company. But for the exact breakup, uh, RTFO will get back to you on that. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question comes from the line of Sri Ram R, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. On slide number 18, you have given working capital for the built pro business 30 days. Can you just break it up uh, into receivables, inventory, and payables? Uh, second question is, uh, I would like to understand the model of this built pro. I mean, do you purchase directly from manufacturers and uh, who are your competitors i just want to understand like let's say there are other players like infra dot market uh, operating in this space so how does it compare uh, how does your model uh, compare uh, you know so i'll answer the second part of your question first so how our model works is we are a retail presence we are a marketplace so we do have physical stores in multiple locations and we do sell products from multiple brands we have direct relationships with almost all the brands where we do hold stock for some brands or we do buy against order for with many brands uh after competition i would say my main and only competition would be mom and pop stores because for example companies like infra dot market are more in the manufacturing manufacturing lens they have more of their own products and their own brand name so they would be more of a competition to my suppliers rather than to me 
Okay. And uh, for the second part, the second part for the inventory will be approximately around the 30 days. The test will be approximately around 40 days when the split happens. And the uh, credit test will be around 40 days. So that average will be around 30 days. The yeah, receivables will be 140 days, you are saying, for the bill pro business. For the law, I'm saying. So it's not a cash and carry model, is it? No, it's not a cash and carry model. We are, we are having influencers as our customer, where we are, uh, they are the repeated uh, influencers, where we will be giving credit to them. So, it's, so the model is not a pure retail one, right? So, so how it works is we do have, so how it works is our inventory holding comes around 45 days and our uh, debtors are actually around 30 days. So how it works around is that we do have influencers, we do have contractors, we have old loyal customers who buy from us. So I think that whole cycle of them buying the material and paying us goes to around 20, 25 days. We also do have some wholesale business and project business in this, which pushes it around a little bit around 40. So that's why we say an average receivable around 30 days. We do have maybe 50% of the business from end retailers who do, do a cash and carry. But as I said, it's a mixed model. And that's why we are talking more of it as a marketplace, because in the industry, which is very unorganized, you do get all types of customers coming in. Okay, and how much uh, would be the project business uh, in this build pro? Uh, I think overall, if you look at it as a company, we look at 55% retail and 45% project and wholesale. This is for the build pro you're seeing, right? It's a okay, so marketplace, because uh, build pro, which is a marketplace. Okay, okay. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes on the line of Miraj Shah with Aryan Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the chance. Um, so I'd like to understand the Porsche Ceramica brand that we have uh, in the tile segment. Is it only for ceramics or do you manage, or do you also make uh, vitrified tiles over there? Uh, so we make all types of tiles in Porsche Ceramica, which is the name is Porsche Ceramica. We do have DVTs, we have vitrified, we have full body, we have parking, we have uh, double charge, nanos, we have the whole range. So from a 4 inch by 4 inch to a uh, Eight foot by ten foot, we have the whole range with us, and all the different uh, types of tiles: porcelain, ceramic, petrified, full body, etc. Understood. So, do we do we manufacture it ourselves, or do we outsource the manufacturing part over here? So, we outsource the manufacturing. We have around twenty-five factories that work with us, which also do manufacturing for a lot of the big names in the industry. So, we are assured of our quality. So, we take up in some cases almost eighty percent of some factory utilization. Some places only twenty twenty-five percent. So I think we are more flexible and nimble because we have multiple factories working on different products for us. And we do have a quality assurance team there who makes sure that each tile that comes out is up to our standards. In that case, sir, this will be more of a trading business, right? Because you'll be buying the finished product from there only? Uh, you could say that, but since it's in our brand, we are able to get a better return on product in terms of margin compared to... Uh, you could say just a trading business and we are selling a lot of it to dealers and retailers and we look at more of a contract manufacturing rather than a trading business. Contract, okay, understood. Uh, so the next question is that uh, I was just taking the shareholder list, we have ATL Apollo back as the shareholder, so I believe that they're, uh, what they were trying to do was uh, they had uh, removed money for the warrants and they subscribed back for the warrants. So, so as per your discussion, latest discussion with them, there won't be any further changes to this, right? Or they're they going to stay, right? Yeah, no changes as of now. I think uh, they have subscribed to the warrants. I think that's going on. There shouldn't be any changes in shareholding. No changes expected. Okay. And what was the contribution of the uh, sale of their products in this year? So this year, overall, Apollo has contributed 37% of our turnover as compared to 42% last year. Okay, okay, understood. And sir, uh, uh, so also in one of the slides you mentioned uh, where are we present geographically in India? Uh, Central and West is something that is that comes after the southern presence uh, that is extremely strong. So when do we plan to have some kind of penetration in the eastern or the northern side? Is it still some time or uh, is it on the cards now? So our focus is to expand our foothold more in south and west and central currently. Uh, eastern markets are 
in, uh, I think Eastern and Northern markets are in our pipeline. I think we're looking at not in the coming years, but we're looking at a lot more potential currently in the West and Central because we have seen very good growth there the last two years. So I think we first want to consolidate, grow aggressively in those markets, make our foothold and our base strong. But a long-term plan is to do Pan-India, and I think that starts with uh, one, more growth in Western Central, and I think with Porsche, we are looking at well, faster Pan-India presence spread, especially with the display center coming up in the coming month. Understood. So just, just one more part on this Porsche Cinemaca part. You mentioned that there are 20, 25 units that you've partnered up with. So what would be the capacity that is available to you over here? Uh, so the exact... In terms of boxes or in terms of uh, metric uh, metric uh, feet, I'll get back to you. But uh, in different factories, we use different percentages of capacity. Some factories, we do use about 80% of the capacity, whereas in others, we do around 25% of capacity, based on obviously the demand in the market. Okay, okay. Uh, and you only did in square meters, if it's possible, later on, I'll take it to you, take it from your offline. Yes. But definitely, we will give you the overall square meter you are looking at. And, and so uh, in the three uh, manufacturing units that we have, um, is there any scope for brownfield expansion if you want to take that ahead uh, in these units or is the land bank not available? Uh, is it exhausted over there? Uh, the land bank is there. I think our first focus is to kind of push and turn around and kind of get a focus on the unit and get a focus on the manufacturing. I think uh, maybe in a year or two we'll have a better idea, especially in a year. And then we could look at, we're not opposed to any ideas. I think we're kind of still in the exploratory phase when it comes to what we can do with the manufacturing. Okay. So, so these will be purely for steel manufacturing, steel and uh, steel products, pipes and tubes, right? Uh, it's not just pipes and tubes. It's also a value-added steel products like roofing and uh, other related products to that. So uh, not necessarily just pipes and tubes. There will be roofing as well. So sir, what would be a broad uh, EBITDA per ton that we'd be making over here? Let's say for FI24, if you could share that number. Oh, just give us a second, we'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Around uh, 1500. But okay, I believe there's a lot more scope over here in that case. Uh, yes, we believe so as well. And, and this one, one final question from my side. Uh, on the balance sheet, we see 83 crores of total gross borrowing, 34 crores of cash. So after the demerger, uh, what component will go in the manufacturing unit and what will go in the marketplace unit? I mean, how much of that will go in each of the units? So the debt... Uh, Approximately around uh, 75 crores will be in the marketplace and around 8 crores will be in the manufacturing side. Okay, and the cash? Cash? Cash also, cash will be approximately around, uh, as on 31st of March, around 30 crores will be in the marketplace and 5 in uh, manufacturing. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And all the best. Thank you. Please give me a moment. Next question comes from the line of uh, Sri Ram R and Digital Invest. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks again for the opportunity. Uh, you know, now that APL has uh, invested uh, in Shankara, so there is one company called SG Mart, which is uh, promoted by the uh, you know, APL Apollo Group. So, what are, is there any conflict of interest, or what is the, you know, can you define the operations of these two entities? Uh, so, SG Mart is more like a super distributor, as you could say. They are uh, we do buy products from them, and then we do send it into our B two B channel. So, I think there's really no conflict of interest. I think it's more of a complementary business. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have reached the end of question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mirat Shah for closing comments.
Yeah, thank you, Alex, sir, and Dhananjay, sir, for uh, allowing us to host you. Uh, yeah, that's it from my side, and uh, all the best for the future, sir. Uh, back to Dhananjay, sir. Thank you, thank you, Miraj, and thank you, everyone, for attending our call. I hope uh, we do informative and we could give you a good, brief, and concise, I think, summary of uh, the last year. And we are hoping to continue this good growth momentum in the year ahead. And uh, thank you all for joining us. I hope you all have a good day. Thank you. On behalf of Shankara Building Products, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.